It's more than a game, it's baseball. One of my first times to an American baseball game was at the invitation of some friends to go out and watch the Brewers at Miller Stadium in Milwaukee. And for an American, that game brings them back to their childhood, when they could get together with friends and family, hit the ball and run the bases. It seemed like there was a fanfare to rival any national holiday, which is an oddity for some, but for Americans, this is their pastime. And every game is a chance to see these sometimes larger than life athletes hit farther and reach higher. Every sport has its pinnacle, but none as coveted as baseball's World Series, a best of seven series that's played between the American League and National League. This is the annual culmination of 162 regular season games for Major League Baseball to be crowned world champions. From an outsider looking in, baseball appeared simple enough. A pitcher throws a ball at the home plate, the other team's batters attempts to hit the ball and run around the field. But three strikes puts the batter out, three outs and the team switch. As Europeans generally prefer simple sports with easy rules and as few breaks as possible. You know, like cricket. Well, I guess only the English like cricket and we're not really Europeans. On the edge of their seats, baseball fans cheer, sing, chant, and have pitch after pitch to quench their thirst. A near 100 miles an hour fastball hits the glove, another out. There was obviously more to this game, so here's what a game looked like to me the first four innings of the game. Each man that's on the side that's up, line up, and one by one go out to home plate. The men who are out try to get him out, and when he is out, he goes in the dugout, and the man on the deck is up, followed by the man in the hole. When they are all out, the side that's out comes in, and the side that's up goes out, and tries to get those coming in out, even if there are men still on and not out. There are men called umpires who stay out all the time, and they decide when the men who are in are out, and depending on the weather and the light, the umpires can also send everybody in, no matter whether they're in or out. When both sides have been in, and all the men are out, including those who are not out, then the game is finished. Wait a second, let's slow that down. We're going into a bit more detail here. This is what I learned about baseball from my friends. There are two teams that alternate between offense and defense, and like other games, each tries to score more points than the other. But in baseball, they don't call them points, they call them runs. And you score a run by completing one circuit of four bases but only while an offense or at bat. It's called at bat because of the cylindrical piece of wood the players use to hit the ball. The thin bat begins to frustrate the batter as a three inches diameter ball with red stitching blows right past him. The baseball can be thrown anywhere from 80 miles per hour, approaching 100 miles per hour, and rarely on a straight trajectory. So who is throwing the ball at the offense batter? The defensive pitcher. He stands in the middle of a mound at the center of the diamond and he starts the action by throwing the ball towards home plate at his catcher. The catcher catches the ball and it is not hit. Each team has nine players in its batting order and they must stick to that order throughout the game unless there are substitutions. A play begins with a batter waiting to hit a pitch from the pitcher. This swing and miss starts to become a pattern until the batter hits the ball. When the batter hits the ball into the field of play, the batter is then referred to as a runner. A batter gets a hit when he reaches a base without getting out, or forcing another runner to get out. He runs from home base to first base. There are three more bases that he has to run, second, third, and then back to home. Runs are then scored when a runner makes it at home before there are three outs in the inning. If players hit the ball over the outfield fence, it's a home run and the batter can circle all four bases without worrying about hustling or stealing bases or getting out. If there is a runner on all three bases and the batter hits a home run, it's called a grand slam because all four offensive players can run the bases and get a free trip home. So what about the defense? How do they stop these guys from scoring runs? A pitcher tries to get a batter out by throwing three strikes. First, a strike is a swing and a miss. Second, a strike is when a batter doesn't swing at a ball that flies over the plate, through the strike zone. If the batter hits the ball in foul territory, it can be a strike, unless there are already two strikes. Then it's just basically a redo. And get this, if the catcher doesn't catch the third strike, 
If it goes past them or they lose it out of their glove, then the batter becomes a runner and can try to get to first base before the catcher finds the ball and throws it to the first baseman. Then he's safe even though he struck out. Now, if the pitcher throws four balls, which means a pitch that is not in the strike zone and the batter doesn't swing at them, the batter is automatically allowed to go to first base. There are a few other ways for the defense to get the offense out. First is the strikeout, which we've discussed, where the batter misses three pitches. Then there is a force out, when the ball is hit and the defense player gets the ball and reaches a base before the runner. Then there are flyouts, when a player hits a ball in the air and it's caught by a defensive player before the ball hits the ground. And last but not least, there are tag outs, where the runner is touched with the ball or by a glove with the ball in it. Let me explain the field to you. The field is often called a diamond, though the field is actually more shaped like a cone. The part of the field closest to the bases inside the diamond is called the infield, and the grassy farther reaches is the outfield. The distance between each base is about 90 feet. The distance that an offensive player must run in order to reach the next base. The defense has infielders, who are the first baseman, second baseman, shortstop, and the third baseman, as well as the outfielders. The left fielder, center fielder, and right fielder. Nine players on the field in all. In professional baseball, there are nine innings, and each inning is divided in two. The top of the inning where one team is at bat, and the bottom of the inning where the team that was at bat grabs their gloves and goes into the field. Each team gets three outs in each half of the innings. After the bottom of the ninth inning is complete, the game is over and the team with the most runs wins. If the game is tied, it can go into extra innings. So there are a few unwritten rules. Baseball has its element of courtesy or sportsmanship. Never swing at the first pitch after back-to-back -back home runs. This is a matter of courtesy, respect for a pitcher who is clearly struggling, offering just a sliver of daylight, a brief light of escape at the end of the tunnel. When hit by a pitch, don't rub the mark. Don't stand on the dirt cut out at home plate while the pitcher is warming up. Don't walk in front of a catcher or umpire when getting into the batter's box. Don't help the opposition make a play. No kidding, right? Follow the umpire's code when addressing them on field. If a pitcher gets pulled, they should stay in the dugout, at least until the end of that inning. Pitchers should never show up their fielders. The list goes on and on, which is what makes baseball so popular and so mysterious to the outsider looking in. So that's what I learned about baseball my first time out. I don't know if I explained it well enough, but I took a swing at it. <laughs>